Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and joining me on the summit today is the Lion football coach, Coach Chris Douglas. Coach, we're previewing college football now, and I have to tell you, it feels good to be able to get to do that and uh, really feel strong about a season ahead of us. I, I know the last time we visited was about 14 months ago. You had just taken the head coach position as the fourth head coach uh, for Lion College and really kind of almost sight unseen. It was one of those times pretty much in the height of, of the pandemic and some of the shutdowns. So I know a lot's happened in the last 14 months. There's even been a, a shortened spring schedule, which we'll talk about a little bit. But tell me about your experience then and what it's been like for you over the last year plus. You know, I used to always joke and our staff would always joke with me at the last place because of just my background, my history, taking this is my third college head coaching job and none of those jobs I took at the regular time frame. I always took them right before the season started. And I was thinking, I wasn't really thinking because I knew COVID was shutting things down, but you know, it was a little closer in, in taking this job, closer to the, more of a regular time frame. But then COVID hit and none of the, the kids were around. And, <laughs> and then we went, we had all of our staff here in August. And then we decided to shut down completely for the fall and go remote. And so where a lot of our players had um, had or excuse me, a lot of teams that we played had uh, a partial season. Uh, they had practices. We had Zoom. And yeah. so that that was a challenge. And then to finally meet our team for the first time, January 28th, right here out to the right of me uh, wow. on the grass for practice was the first time to physically see them uh, was definitely a challenge. That was that was difficult and uh, and turn around and play four weeks later. And I was actually talking with a coach earlier today and he asked me about how the spring was. And, and you know, hindsight's 2020. And, and sometimes you think, man, should we have played? Should we have not? And we've got four guys. I actually just visited with one this morning because he had a doctor follow up doctor's appointment. Four guys that are out completely for the fall because of injuries they sustained wow. in the uh, in the spring season. And I hate that. But it's one thing to get hurt and lose the rest of your fall season. But you've got a whole eight, nine months to recover where these guys have eight weeks. And right. that's just not physically possible. And so they're going to, you know, we talk about all these players getting that extra year. Well, these guys don't get that extra year because they burned it on a partial spring season due to an injury. And so I will definitely write a book when my career's over and I have some time about <laughs> taking three college jobs, sight unseen, not sight unseen, but taking them late and having to rebuild things and then finally getting on the grass and getting 12 inches of snow and a wrecking, you know, like a, a, I don't know if it's a hundred year <laughs> snow for this area, but we lost a week of practice mm -hmm. going into only four weeks of practice, getting ready for a team that had played three games in the summer and had 10, 10 weeks of practice in, in, or excuse me, in the fall. And <sighs> it's just been crazy. It's been nuts. And now we're trying to compress a lot of prep for the fall in basically a six week span because we had to jump on the road recruiting for our 22s as soon as our right. season was over. Uh, we didn't have time to to process the last season, to do all of our analytics, to really evaluate and to even to spend a lot of time to meet with our, our current players. We had to hit the road recruiting to catch up on our 22 class. So it's been a whirlwind. Let's just say that. And I was hoping in the summer, you know, typically June and July, you have a little bit of downtime. You can decompress. It's not happening. Now we got we got still too much to, to do to get ready for the fall. Well, the spring, and by the way, I'll I'll be on, on the, the lineup in line to get your book when that does come out. So please <laughs> give me a heads up when 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 you get that published. I, I will. We'll <laughs> have the book showings and doing autographs and the whole bit. I'll be there for the signing. Um <laughs> oh and five in the spring. It it was a struggle of a spring on top of that. So I I know things uh, were a little bit challenging there without beating that down. Uh let me just go right into some of the things that happened there in the spring uh, football season. I know one of the things you you spoke about before, you, you wanted a quarterback to be able to pull the trigger, but you knew that you had to have the running game there too. You mm -hmm. went a little more run heavy uh, mm -hmm. during the spring, about 55, 45, something like that, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, was that part of then, you know, maybe focusing on a ground game a little bit more due to a, a lack of practice or, or what you would expect of a quarterback or quarterbacks as the case may be? Talk about your spring in, in, in the from the offensive perspective. Sure. You know, first of all, 
I think it's important to know that expectation level of the performance was really less about wins and losses and more about what we were accomplishing on the field in a very behind the eight ball, uh, short time frame prep type of situation. I was really, really pretty enthused and impressed with our team. I mean, they play super hard. I mean, I've been coaching for 26 years. I don't know that I've had a team that played this hard. I don't think it was a hey, I'm just really juiced up because we just came off of COVID and I lost an entire fall. I, I don't think it was that because we were playing as hard or harder in game five as we were in game one. Um, we've got a lot of things to clean up and we're a very young team, but to lose two by seven and one by three and that right. three we should have won <laughs> if it not for a, a, a muffed uh, a muffed kickoff at the end of the game, um, you know, we, we probably come away with a W there. But very, very optimistic about the future. But yes, we really had to, it, it was a tough struggle for me offensively to not try to put more stuff in offensively to compete versus let's just make sure that we know what we're doing when we go out there and be able to handle the fundamentals and handle the basics. And as we like to say around here, we want to play fast and furious. Well, in order to do that, you got to play without thinking. And so there was a lot of times where the offense is just too new for the guys and they are out there thinking. So mm -hmm. I felt like at times I was fighting the battle between putting more in to be competitive and holding back enough that we can be sound. And so we had to lean a little bit on some things that um, maybe we wouldn't normally in a, in a normal season with more prep time. Uh, but then also you know, we, we ran into different defenses that we're used to seeing um, that took away some things. And so it, it forced us into maybe a little bit more of a ground heavy attack. Um, definitely not a reflection of our quarterbacks. If, if anything, probably a reflection more on our, our young wide receiver crew that can't get off press coverage. Um, I, I told again, told someone earlier today uh, that I was visiting with in the last 10 years of ball, I think I've seen more press man in the five games that we played this spring than I did in the last 10 years uh, all combined. So uh, it, we just, we've got to get better. We've got to, we've got to be a little bit better prepared for handling man cover and, and getting off of that. But it also, you've got to have some guys that have some, some moxie and some savvy and some experience. And that's the biggest thing to be able to handle that. And so that, that just comes in time. I, I feel really good about our quarterback, Isaiah Bradford's a, a special one. Um, his backup, uh, Michael Troxler, you know, def definitely demonstrated in, in a game and a half that you know he can come in and play for us as well. And then we've got a good crew of, of four freshmen coming in as well that we feel really, really good about. So um, quarterback position is solid. We're going to be good there. And we've, we've got a really solid core of receivers coming in to go on top of, of some guys that got a lot of action this year and got a lot of experience and some guys that were young and maybe even played out of position that are going to be so much better this year too. So along with that and a young offensive line that, that playing heavy on the run game is definitely going to, going to benefit <laughs> them coming forward because now they got a lot of experience. Uh, I feel really good about where we're the direction we're going offensively and, and the people more importantly that we have plugged in there. And I do recall you saying it was a kind of a young offensive line that you had, had a little bit of experience. Now it has just a, that much more yeah. coming through the spring. So that, that should benefit you as well. We're speaking now with Chris Douglas here, the lion football coach uh, here on Midwest sports net. And I encourage you, please sub subscribe to the channel as we're talking college football and excited to get to do that here in the summer uh, coach, uh, you know, and, I we talk about your offense. You do have some some strong defensive players returning, including Bala Muhammad and and Chris Reese. Tell us where you are on the defensive side. We feel really good there. We knew coming in we were very thin at, at corner and very thin at, at defensive tackle. Um, we have made some inroads at those two positions, not as many corners as I would like, but I feel like we're, we're going to be much deeper. And we've got a good core. I mean, our three or four coming back are really solid played very very well for us not not going to overwhelm you overwhelm you with athleticism but they're very intelligent young men uh very very smart players that can play the position with a little bit more mental aspect than maybe a lot that are just out there and and you know my cat's on your cat and let's go um and and that's you know that's the team we're going to be i mean we are a, a high academic institution here uh, we're going to have sometimes some not as fast, but maybe smarter guys in some spots as well. And so we got to take advantage of that and we've got to leverage that. Uh, Bala is a fireball. I mean, he is a full of energy, but he's such a dynamic player too. 
uh, plays a critical role for us in that that alley out, you know, to the field, playing that edge and, and being able to turn things in and make some plays. But then he's got being in pass coverage as well and and does an awesome job there. Chris Reese, you know, is an undersized guy, but man, he plays hard. Great tackler, does an awesome job for us as well. We've got some really, some really good players coming back, but some also very excited about some of the young players coming in as well uh, on the defensive side. And that's going to be critical for us. You know, last this last spring, we kind of had to band-aid it a little bit where we were more of a four-man front to start, but attrition starts to kick in a little bit. And now all of a sudden you find yourself in a three-man front uh, a little bit more. And then by the end of the season, you're forced into a three-man <laughs> front and you're forced to take a freshman tight end that not playing a ton for you. And he's got to go play defensive end and it, you just make it work. And so with more stability there with, um, with better numbers, uh, it, it'll take some time again because we'll be young, but I feel really, really good about the handle that Coach uh, Zach Root, our defense coordinator, has on that side of the ball and the rest of our, our defensive coaching staff. Uh, we know that we've, we're have we going to win games a lot on defense as well, as uh, probably more so than on offense at times. And so you know, we've got to make sure that we take care of that side of the ball. Even though I've been on the offensive side quite a bit, I, I was born and bred on the defensive side. And so uh, I know where my bread is buttered. I know where uh, <laughs> – I know where the success uh, ends up happening, even though offense, I, you know, defense is the good side of the ball, but the offense is the sexy side of the ball. I know we got to be good. Uh, and if we're going to be good as a team, we got to be good on defense. So we're definitely going to make sure that, that, um, you know, we're getting the right personnel there. I understand. I understand. Coach, one, one of the things that I, I definitely wanted to address when, when we talked today, uh, the passing of, of Nacho Gomez, your kicker and punter. I had the opportunity to visit with him, get to do an interview at uh, Football Media Day a couple of years ago back in 2019. And and Gomez passed uh, at the end of March, so pretty much mid-season. It was very unexpected. It was one of those things. I, I just want to give you an opportunity to speak about him and honor him uh, quickly. Absolutely. You know, the, the thing with Nacho, it, it, it's hard because I didn't get a chance to recruit him. I didn't get a chance to spend all four years with him. But in the short time that he was around me, he made a, a tremendous impact. I mean, he came in in the fall and, and lived in town. Um, you know, he made a point to visit with me. He would just stop by the office. He'd be, you know, out on the field. I'd, I'd hear thumping of the ball and I'd look out the window and, and see him out there kicking. And, and I knew he was going to stop by and, and just check in. Um, and he didn't know me beyond a, a phone call, a, a, a Zoom call after I got the job. He, he didn't know me from Adam. But uh, he went out of his way to to connect with me and went out of his way to see how I was doing and, and the transition and, and just such a sincere, genuine young man. I mean, he really touched lives even deeper than our football team. I mean, this impacted our campus. Um, and on top of it, he had been here for four years. Mm -hmm. Just such a great dude. Um, just such a great man. And so it, it, it really hit our team hard. Um, it was going right into our last game of the spring uh, on a Tuesday. And, um, you know, I went to our seniors at first and I asked them, what do you want to do? Because I, I can tell you right now, I didn't want to play. I, I was right. in no, no mental state to, to be able to do that. Uh, but our seniors were adamant that they wanted to play for, for Nacho. They wanted to they felt like that he would want that, that he would want to do that. Uh, and so then we took it to our team. And, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, it was not 100 uh, percent down the line. Hey, let's all play and, you know, let's go rally. And it, no, it wasn't like that. And we had a few players that opted out and decided not to play. But we and we had some others that didn't want to, but they did because their teammates wanted to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, probably our coaching staff really didn't want to as well. But as I told our staff, it's not about us. It's about these players and, and helping them through the grieving process. And if that means we need to go play a game, we go do that. And, um, you know, I, I felt like and I told our team afterwards, even though we came up short and, and I know that was a, a concern for some of our players that we would not be honoring a Nacho with a loss. I told them how we honored Nacho was how we played. Yeah. And our guys played their tails off. Uh, fought hard being very underhand I mean, we didn't practice all week we literally had a we had a memorial on thursday on the practice field we turned around and had a walk through practice on thursday and another walk through on friday and then we teed it up and played a game and it, you know our guys played their tails off and i think they represented nacho very well that way 
Um, I'm still dealing with it myself. I mean, it's it's been right. now. I can't even I can't even track the number of days it's been. But um, there's still days I walk in my office and and think about that loss, and it, it, it hits pretty hard. I've been doing this for 26, going on 27 years, and have lost a couple other players uh, as an assistant and, and one as a, a head coach, but never one right there with you, mm-hmm. and um, there in your facility and and uh, everything. And so it, it was tough, and uh, we tried to be there for their family. Uh, Fatima, his wife, he actually got married uh, the summer before his senior year. And so uh, her and, and, and Nacho's parents and, and his sister, uh, you know, we grieved with them and honored them in, in many, uh, many different ways and many different aspects, even through graduation. And, and so we're still praying for their family and still still trying to support them. And, and we're going to be putting together a memorial uh, here on campus in our facility. And, and once we get a, an on-campus stadium where we can play at, uh, we'll be doing that as well. Uh, you know, prepping memorial because of the imp- not because he was a football player, not because um, because of the loss, but because of who he was and how he lived his life. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to acknowledge him and to honor him and, and for you and your team as well. And and I know here we are in June and it's still fairly recent. So I, I know there's a, there's a ways to go, but uh, we'll be praying for you as well and uh, recognizing you and your team. Well, Coach, then as we wrap up our time together, we look ahead now to the fall of 2020 and the schedule as it is, you all hit the, the field first at St. Louis uh, against Missouri Baptist, which is becoming a perennial a non-conference matchup for you all. Mm-hmm. And then it's all conference games after that. Uh, another game on the road, you, you head out to Ottawa, and, and you didn't play the Spirit last year, which that means that they still have that uh, that upset from 2019, I'm sure, on their minds and are going to welcome you out to Arizona <laughs> uh, with open arms, I'm sure. Uh, September 11th at home as you, as you take on uh, Wayland Baptist and the Sooner Athletic Conference now with 10 teams in it, uh, Louisiana College making the move to NAI, so you'll get them a little bit later on the year as well. So a uh, full slate ahead of you. That's correct. Yeah, we're excited as at Louisiana College. It gets us another school that's – it's six hours away, but you know, six hours is not a bad trip at all uh, at the college level. I'm used to multiple eight and, and ten hour trips, so uh, I, I remind our guys that six hours is not that big a deal. But yeah, we we get to start off with a a, a, a banner there in our conference uh, going out to Ottawa. <laughs> you know, uh, reigning conference champions from the previous fall, and uh, got upset by Arizona Christian this this spring. Uh, and a little bit of a surprise, but uh, Ottawa will, will definitely bring it one way or the other. Whether they remember 2019 or not, <laughs> they're definitely <laughs> going to bring it. We get the heat of Arizona right off the bat uh, first yeah. weekend in September, basically. <laughs> so that should be interesting. Uh, we better hydrate uh, as, we're, yes. as we're loading that plane. Uh, but, yeah, I'm excited about the the schedule. Uh, we've got a good balance. I feel like you know, there's some team, there are some years where I look at the schedule like we got all the good teams on the road and we got all the not so good teams. Teams at home, which is, you know, you kind of good and kind of bad, depending on your perspective. But uh, it is a good balance. And we've got a couple of bye weeks. Um, Missouri Baptist looks like for a while is going to be uh, a team that we can lean on as a non-conference opponent for a while, unless something changes within our conference. So we're looking forward to going up there. That gets me uh, a little closer to where I've been the last 10 years as well. So we'll have mm-hmm. lots of friends from uh, the previous institution from McMurray that will uh, come and attend that one. So uh, hopefully we'll put a a, a good product ready to go for the season out there uh, August 28th. Well, we look forward to to that and, and, again, just enjoying talking about football now. So success to you, Coach, this season to the Scots as the football team is uh, getting ready now for the fall 2021 season. First time again you'll get an opportunity to see them will be August 28th. And if you are a Scots home fan, it'll be September 11th as uh, Waylon Baptist will come to Batesville. Coach Chris Douglas, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Again, success to you all this season, and I just appreciate the visit. Absolutely, Joe. I appreciate the time. I always like uh, having a chance to visit with you, and I do appreciate you uh, letting me talk a little bit about our team and, and about Nacho in particular. Always a pleasure, Coach. Thank you, sir. Thank you.